Hello mums and dads, boys and girls, friends of Dorothy. Welcome to an unboxing of a vacuum cleaner. And this one has got me quite excited. And after all the years I have of opening vacuums, I, I don't really get excited anymore. But this one is quite an exciting one. But hopefully my excitement won't turn into disappointment as it does in so many of these unboxings, because this is a vintage machine. This is a used vacuum, not a nice factory fresh. I've wanted one of these for a long time, a long time, longer than I can care to remember. When I saw this on eBay, I thought, oh, it's going to go for a lot of money, and it didn't. Well, it went for a fair bit of money, but not hundreds. This is pretty rare in the UK, fairly common in the USA I expect, because this is a USA made vacuum. Now I've wanted one of these, as I said, for a while. I, I used to have a leaflet, an A4 double sided leaflet featuring this machine and um, the one I had was, uh, the, the cleaner I've seen was in um, so white and an orange colour. The celebrity, we know, it's a celebrity. Well, they've packed it well, that's for sure. This is a Hoover Celebrity Custom. I think it's an S3001. I did have the Celebrity Air Ride, which was much more common in the UK, which was like the flattened constellation. I had one of those. But I've never had one of these. It's going to require some cleaning up. And with all this, Packaging, I'm going to have to do some cleaning after the video. Right, it's been well, well packed, so thank you to the seller. Here we have the hose, looking rather different. Now this hose, now I don't know if this feature is going to work. I'm hoping it will. Oh. I'm not sure, might. This has got probably one of the earliest examples of remote control on off, probably of any vacuum. And this works in quite an ingenious way. I've had a look at um, a thread on Vacuum Land. I think he was an, uh, a Canadian collector that bought one of these from a, a, a thrift shop, or a charity shop as we call them in the UK, and he showed the gubbins inside. This switch here turns the machine on and off, but it doesn't have any electrical cable. Looks like it does if you look at the shape of the hose, but that is just a tube that carries air, I believe. So it works on a pneumatic, not spelt N-U, spelt P, P-H, I think. So it's uh, quite an ingenious system. Now whether it works or not, I don't know. I should be able to get it working, hopefully, if it isn't working. But if this switch on the hand grip doesn't work, there is a switch on the machine that will turn it on and off. It's quite a nice long hose. It's very... well, it's not very grubby, it's a bit grubby. But that will clean up nicely. And there's the end. There's a tiny, tiny hole. I think that's where it connects up. I don't know if we can quite see. Yeah, just, just in the middle of your screen, children, there's a tiny hole at the top there. I think that's where the air goes through for the um, switch. So there's that. We've got telescopic tube with Hoover's uh, pip fitting and the clip. Mm, it's in pretty good condition. It will clean up nicely, I think. I've got so many vacuums I want to clean up that I'm going to wait till the summer when we've got hopefully a bit of warmth and a bit of sun so I can be putting some of the parts outside to dry. Right, so we've got the hose, we've got the extension wand. Now there should be a, a main nozzle, there should be some other small nozzles. One of the nozzles is cracked but it's a pretty common nozzle so I'll be able to get something. I might have something actually, somewhere. Right, oh. now I have bought myself some bags and a filter and I'll show you, it's not the correct filter but it might be suitable. 
I can't I couldn't find original bags for this. I do have a pack somewhere. So I've had to buy some uh, imitation bags. Well, the seller has packed it very well. Very well. But I think even if he hadn't, whoa, even if he hadn't, I think it would have survived because I think this is a pretty strong vacuum. It's metal, you see. I believe the top and the bottom is metal. Right, I'll just put that to one side. And we'll have a look at the tools. So they're very American. That's slightly different to the all-purpose nozzle we had in the UK. Ours didn't have that bit at the front, that, like that. It's still got those rubber teeth, which are surprisingly good for pet hair. That doesn't seem to have had very much use at all. Ones that are very used, those rubber teeth are worn right down, but those are still pretty, pretty long. But they would wear down after a lot of toing and froing. When my mum had use of my constellation, I had a pink and rose white constellation. For some reason she didn't use the main floor nozzle, it didn't really do a very good job. She used to use the small nozzle for cleaning her carpets. So it, that meant that uh, the little teeth on the nozzle that that was uh, supplied with my constellation, they did wear down because they obviously got a lot of use. So there we are, all purpose nozzle. This is the, this is the brush that was pictured as having a crack in it. Now, I don't know if this actually belonged to this machine, and I expect it doesn't. So I'm not bothered. It's not in the same colour. This is a, a sort of a taupey colour. And as you can see, this is white. So this could be a UK nozzle. It's, a, it's the all-purpose brush, which I will have one somewhere. Uh, I've got the instruction book too, so I can see. I don't know if that would have been supplied. So, but that, that has a crack in it. Again, very grubby. A little bit worse for wear, that. It will improve with a nice soaking and some biological detergent. Don't know what I can do about it. I think that somebody's, somebody's got the scissors to that and give it a haircut, like, you know, like the yellow yeah, like you do with a dolly. Little girls with their dollies in the 70s would have taken the hair, the hair cutting scissors to them and made a right mess, leaving poor Cindy or Barbie as bald as a coot. Or as bald as rusty skulls. <coughs> that was too much information I, I learnt from Rusty. Oh, hmm. I think that... Anyway, I'm going to ask my, the knowledge of my American friends. I have had a Hoover um, crevice tool that's got these ridges on. It's missing its pips, so the pip... The pip, I think, it doesn't look like it's come off. I don't know if it would have had one. I would have thought it would have had a pip on there. It's the right colour. So, folks, in America, is that is that the original one, do you know? I'm not bothered if it isn't. As long as the cleaner itself's all right. We'll look at this in a minute. Look. Ooh, instruction book. And finally, I always like the look of this nozzle. On the... Um, the one I've seen, the leaflet I've seen, this nozzle was white. Look at that, it's in pretty, I mean it is a bit bit fluffy, but that's in pretty good condition. I'm absolutely over, over the moon to get this. I really am. So, this nozzle here, it has full width cleaning, but if you want to direct the suction to either edge, you turn the dial, hopefully. <laughs> it might be stiff because, oh, there we are. There we go. That probably was never turned when whoever owned this first. I might be the first person to turn that. So anyway, you can direct the suction to either side. But for full width cleaning, you have it in the middle. That's in very good condition. That's not gonna need a lot to restore that. A bit of a wash, look at that lovely detailing there. That Metal. Look at that. Bit of oiling is required. And a bit of a polish, car polish. And that's going to come up lovely. And the underside, you know, as I say, I wonder if that's what. Ah! 
that must be what those two, you see there's two holes. Now, I, I saw that and thought, oh, perhaps there's a wheel, wheels should have been there, but I think they, and I can try this when I'm uh, testing the machine out, I think those holes are what um, directs the suction to those holes when you turn the dial. It does have a wheel there in the middle, and this floaty, so there's no, there's no other adjustment, so it's carpet and hard floor, it's just got the floating brush, very like the uh, larger nozzles used to be get, used to get on the Constellation and the uh, other Hoover cylinder cleaners. But again, it's superfluous. That, that base plate, metal base plate, will polish up lovely. I've got some nice metal polish. So that's fantastic and it's a quality piece. It's quality. The best quality. Here we are, Hoover Celebrity Model S301. Owner's manual. That's in very good condition. When I saw this initially on eBay, I thought, that's not an official UK model. I don't ever remember seeing it in those colours. But, um, I think it is. Ah, perhaps. Mm, it does show a dusting brush, an uh, all purpose brush. Hang on, let me have a look. Oh, stair cleaning. <laughs> Clean stair carpeting by placing the clean on its side as pictured. Ooh, I don't think they're very good for stairs, these. Ah, right, no, it does. It does come. Oh, no, it says furniture nozzle or furniture brush. That crevice still does look like, I'm trying to show you, it does look like it's got the ribs on. It actually doesn't, it doesn't show Pip. If any of you know what this would have like, been like new, that little picture doesn't actually show the Pip, unless the illustrator didn't bother, but it does show the Pip fitting on the other tools. That hard floor brush there does say available at additional cost, so it wouldn't have come with this as standard. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure if that's everything. So it's got proper... Proper oldie worldy photographs, not line drawings we get now. Can't believe it's in very good condition. We'll see if we can date it. Uh, but yes, it's definitely a UK one because this says Hoover Limited, Perivale, Greenford, Middlesex. But there's no sort of date. It's a sep it's seventies. I'm going to say seventies. I think. Right, on to the main show, folks. Uh, where's my scissors? They're underneath, oh, here they are. Right. Carefully cut through. It's grubby. It's grubby, but not filthy. Oh, look at, oh, it's, it's, do you remember the days, folks, when vacuums used to have a wood effect on, on them? This one, I think it was more prevalent on American cleaners, where you have a wood effect panel. Oh, it's dirty underneath. And I, I've, just, I've just vacuumed before the video. Wow. <laughs> Look at that, folks. Look at that. Oh. Covered in muck. Look at that. No, Daisy, don't you look at it. Oh, Daisy's come to have a look. Are you coming to have a look at this? Look at that futuristic celebrity custom. That is in very good condition. It really is. I mean, it is a bit dirty, but... Right, what I'm going to do, folks, because I don't like to present such a lovely old cleaner in a mess, I'm going to clear up the packaging whiz over the carpet with another vacuum and then we'll open this up and have a closer look at it and uh, fingers crossed, Seller said it did work, the plug has got some tape on it so I think it will require a new plug but apart from that so far very pleased. Well folks I've given this celebrity custom a rudimentary wipe down very quick as you can see it's come up very well I've just used some uh, Waterless wash and wax car polish stuff. Um, it needs more detailed clean, but I didn't really want to show you it as dirty. 
as it was. It's quite dusty underneath. Um, I haven't opened it, but I have had a look. I could see when I was giving it a bit of a clean that the bag looks quite full and it looks quite a mess inside there. Here it is. Look at it. Look at it. What a futuristic vac. Do you know, I think it's survived in this sort of condition because, basically, because it's quite a bulky, heavy machine. It wouldn't be something... Well, it's quite manoeuvrable. It's not something that... Uh, you could really pull along and knock into things easily. And of course it's helped by having this furniture guard that wraps entirely around the machine. And of course it's metal, a metal top and a metal base. Look at those wheels. I mean, that's a, just huge, but quality, quality made vacuum. Right. Look at that. Look at that detailing there. Here's the control panel in the uh, wood grain effect. So we've got piston bag check indicator. Of course, we don't know whether any of this works yet. Piston bag check indicator. We've got minimum, medium, and maximum. When I saw this cleaner, when I saw... I've never seen one in the flesh. I only had the leaflet. But when I saw the leaflet, I assumed that this controlled... It does need work, I think, because it's a bit stiff. Oh, it's not working at all now. There we are. I assumed minimum, medium and maximum controlled the motor speed, but it doesn't. It just opens a vent underneath here to let air into the machine to reduce the suction. So that's how that works. This power switch, it doesn't seem to stay down, whether or not that's all you do to turn it on. But obviously you are supposed to be able to turn it on using the hand grip. But there we go. Celebrity Custom. It's got the carry handle at the front. It looks very like the Celebrity Air Ride carry handle. The Celebrity Air Ride I had, I um, got for my Auntie Mary, and it was, uh, well, I was, it was faulty, let's say, but it, did, it needed new motor bearings, which I did source and fit, and it also needed a new handle, which also sourced and fitted. That, that was back in the day when you could get these parts quite easily from Hoover uh, Spares in Bolton. I think they are still located in Bolton. At the back, I'm not sure what that hole is about, but it's got some dust in it. Oh, it could be just for the um, debris, I suppose. I don't know if it's for that, is it? Could be for the uh, crevice tool. Excuse me, I'm just going to lean behind you. There we are. So I think they look okay on. They do match those three tools. So this, uh, I think this one's a bit superfluous, doesn't, don't you think? Uh, looks like it's been glued and all sorts. I don't, somebody, somebody has, yes, they have. Somebody's gone to a lot of trouble to get this working. So this was from an era where people didn't throw things away and buy new. They repaired. That looks like it's had some sort of repair. Quite a neat one. I don't. You see, that doesn't move. Yes. This, this should swivel. And as you can see, the pip isn't quite central. So it's been stuck on. But well, it's been done quite well, to be honest. That, that's just a little thing. I'm not even sure that that would have been with this machine. It, as I say, it doesn't go. But perhaps for the UK version, they just put that in with it. I don't know. But um, I'm not bothered about that. Uh, I was wondering where the auto cord rewind was, but I've just quickly read the instruction. Well, I looked at part of the instruction book. Oh, that's smooth. I mean, it's click, 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 but that, that's so smooth. Wow. So, oh, don't, uh, hopefully it's not locking out. Oh, there we go. It's locked out. It's a pull-pull system. So there's no button when you finish. And look, it's the, the cord goes with it in this uh, beige colour. So to rewind you just give it a slight tug. There we are. And it'll go back in. I'll need a bit of help. It's an old girl. But I think that plug... Oh dear. Uh, it's what, you know, that's going to be a bit temperamental. There we go. Just got to get it a certain, right, certain way and it'll, it'll, it'll lock. Just for the purpose of the video, I will plug it in, but that will be replaced. I don't know why it's got so much. 
but it, oh, it's all cracked. <laughs> you see, that's not something, folks, that you want to skimp on. If a plug cracks on a vacuum, you don't put tape on it. This is obviously cracked. I can see it's all, it's all cracked. How much would a new plug have cost? Not a lot of money. So, <laughs> I will risk it, just because I want to see this going. I don't want to wait to put a new plug on. This might be the last thing I ever do. But really, kiddies, that is very dangerous. But like I say, this was this was be this would have been an expensive vacuum back in the day. It wouldn't it wouldn't have been a cheap machine. So why do they skimp and just not buy a new plug? Because that isn't safe. You don't repair a cracked plug with tape. You've got a cracked plug, folks. You throw that plug away and you fit a new one. Now, what I initially thought when I've seen this machine in pictures, I thought this thing here. I thought that was the cord rewind pedal. I thought you press that down to rewind the cable. But a quick look at that reveals something that I thought this machine couldn't do. And that is blow. Obviously the Celebrity Air Ride you could use as a blower. But because this has got wheels, go on. Because this has got wheels, I thought, oh, you can't use it for blowing. But you can. Go in there. I think if I pull this out completely, it'll, it'll go in better. But, whoops, there we are. I'll take the tools off and show you the underside. There's one little disappointment with the underside of this. And the it's the rating plate. And it does actually stand on its end, look. Surprisingly, well, it's because it's got, and it's, it's quite stable. Because it's got a stand here, look. It's got a thing that sticks out. And, of course, that bit's flat, so it does stand up. Underneath, yeah, you see it's missing half of the rating sticker. I'll read to you what we, what I can see. All I can see is 41119726. So I don't know if we can date it from that. And this is, for the time... I'm sure this is sort of 70s, late 70s, mid to late 70s. This has got a 1,375 watt motor. That is pretty remarkable for the time this machine was made. You, you'd have cleaners at 1,000 watts and that would be considered, you know, sort of top wattage. But this goes way, way beyond that. So, two big rubber tired wheels. I mean, it is a quality vacuum. They're a bit, a bit wobbly, but I don't think that's uh, anything to be concerned about. A little bit of oil on this one. Your front caster. Now that, and I thought it's missing. See, no, I keep, I keep trying to find things wrong. So far it's been okay. It looked like there was two rivets missing, but no, it looks like it's only had two rivets to attach the caster. But look, this, little switch I thought was the cord rewind switch is in fact a diverter you can see here it might be a little bit stiff because it probably needs a clean oh, I can hear some sort of a spring what's that Ugh. so now I can't oh it's over there hang on Ugh. now we can use it as a blower because the hose, if I can line it up correctly, there we are. So perhaps it'll go on its end there. You can use it to blow dust out of inaccessible places. So that's something I never knew you could do with this vacuum. It was never a feature, I don't think it was ever sh mentioned in the brochure, that you could use it for blowing. So there you go. And of course, make sure you close it after using the blowing function. Is there anything to show you at the back here that I haven't shown you? Not really. So, this metal catch here is to open it up. So let's reveal the horror. Or not. The same catch as the air ride had, is it the, I think it's the same as the, the Constellation catch. Doesn't want to come off there. There we are. Right folks, 
I saw um, Vacumad, is it Vacumad 8's uh, video on his um, celebrity air ride and when they opened it up it was absolutely full of muck. I don't know if there was a bag in it. Oh! Oh! Not, not as bad as I was expecting. That isn't bad at all. It's quite full. Now, I don't know, I don't think it's a genuine Hoover one. I think the genuine Hoover ones, I have got a pack, I think they are green, but it doesn't have the Hoover logo on. It does say though, dispose all instead of disposable, because Hoover used to call them dispose all bags. Disposal bags for cylinder cleaners. This product is made by the original makers of vacuum bags in Great Britain. Mm. Suitable for use with celebrity cleaners. So, or, because there is no Hoover logo on, it makes me think that it isn't genuine. Look at the size of that. Oh, it's all coming out. They used to say in the advert, which I do have on my channel for the uh, Celebrity Air Ride, the bag is a full yard long. That's a yard. In uh, metric, that's probably just over a metre in length. Now the bags I've got, we'll look at that in a minute, it's not too bad. With these ones, from uh, Electro Part. Now, I'm going to have to lean over again for my scissors. Now it's a shame that they, you can't get sort of fleecy bags for this. So I don't think these are going to be that good. There was another, I'll probably get another pack. There was another manufacturer of these bags um, I saw on eBay, although it looked like they were a lot smaller, but it could be because they were folded, but it seemed to have a double wool, double skinned bag. This is just single paper, which, which this one is as well, and the original one would have been too. So I'm going to dispose of that. Now what this has got, which I didn't expect, but I don't know if it's original and I'm not sure. No, it's definitely, it's not original. I would be surprised if it was. That's obviously been cut to fit. The original one, as far as I remember from the celebrity, the regular celebrity, was more of a, a very open, black, very open weave. Didn't, wouldn't have done much filtering at all. That's a more spongy-like material. Now, what I thought, I thought I'd get these. This is from eBay. I thought it was just the packaging that was filthy, but when you open them, they're, they're a little bit soiled from, from a lot of um, storage. But I'm glad it's got an original in. That's obviously going to be far too big. But what I thought, I'll use that as a rough template and cut round and then put this filter. These are designed to fit the Hoover Compacts and yet they are at least twice as thick as the compact ones, the original compact filters. So I thought that would make a nice filter to go on top of the motor because obviously that's where the motor is. But for now I'm just, I'll just wipe off a bit of the dust from there. What I'll do, well no, I will put a nut, well no. What I'll do, I'll quickly pause and just vacuum this out, put a new bag in, and then we should be able to judge the suction. But inside, apart from dust, looks very good. I don't think this has been opened for any reason, you know, being fiddled with. You've got, you can just, I don't know if you can just about see, but between the plastic motor casing and the metal base of the machine, there is this plastic thick plastic membrane. If you ever take a vacuum like this apart, don't leave that out because that helps to insulate the machine. But it's, I would have thought it's fairly easy. I remember when I um, replaced the bearings on the Celebrity Air Ride, it was pretty straightforward. This thing just comes off and it's very easy to service. What might not be so easy is all the gubbins that are behind here. I'll have to look at that. They just might need cleaning and reassembling. It might just work out of the out of the thing, I don't know. Right, I'll just vacuum this out, give it a wipe out, put a new bag in, and uh, we'll finally switch this on. 
Okay, I've vacuumed out the interior and given it a bit of a polish. It's very good, very good condition as you can see, the top and the bottom. What I did notice when I was putting the filter on, the motor is stood on its head, so to speak. So normally you'd expect to see, be able to see the fan through the grill. Well, I might as well show you rather than telling you. I don't know if you're about to see. But instead of seeing the fan through the grill, I could see the back side of the motor. So obviously the fan is this side of the machine. And I was wondering, oh, well, where's the exhaust? Um, oh, actually, I thought it, yes, it must be at the top. Obviously, when you have the um, diverter open, it exhausts from the back. So I'm wondering, well, I'm assuming, must exhaust, well, I'll find out when I turn it on, must exhaust from around the top here. Right, so. <laughs> well, if it works as good as it looks, I'm going to be one happy boy. Let's put the bag in. As I say, I'm sure I've got a pack of three um, genuine American-made bags for this. I don't really want to use them though, unless I can manage to source some others. So that doesn't go on. Mm. I thought that would push on a bit better than that, but that, oh mm, dear. That, I'm going to have to do something about that because that is not, I thought it would push, or does it? It doesn't push on. There's a tiny little lip and doesn't seem to want to go beyond that unless I really force it. Okay. Yes, right. I don't think that's right, but it really wasn't on properly. That's a bit better. This is not going to be my da daily vacuum, is it? So let's be honest. The bags are very poor, these uh, Electro part ones, compared to the one that was in, and certainly compared to the genuine ones. But anyway, there we go. Now, there is a tiny little wire. Um, I'm not sure what this, this is. This seems to be a mains wire, this. So what would that control? Not sure. Oh, it's probably for the power switch. But there is also, you won't be able to see from here, but there's a, a very thin brown wire that I think has something to do with the uh, pneumatic system for turning the machine on and off. So, ah, yes, ah, yes, now. There is a, there's some prongs. I think they're designed, that's pushing the bag off now. Thought they would be, ah, yeah. All right, well, I think that's on. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna keep searching eBay, see if I can get some genuine bags. They are available in the USA the genuine ones but obviously this machine or similar machines would have been a bit more common in in the states even the cable I mean it's gonna have a wipe but it's in pretty clean condition I've not seen any damage <laughs> do you know I'm a silly fool I was thinking why has it got this bulbous top on it you know the motor doesn't protrude I've just <laughs> Of course, it's because it's got the cord rewind in it, hasn't it? You silly boy, Roger. Silly, silly boy. Give that a wipe. It's, you know, I'm going to give it a proper clean and a semi strip down, but I'm not going to go too mad. It, depending on, you see that? There we go. Okay, folks, well, I'll connect the hose. Obviously, the hose is going to need a good clean up. Now, I'm, I don't really like to submerge, and especially not this. I don't like to submerge these types of hoses completely in water um, and double stretch hose ones I don't like because they've got springs in them made of metal and I'm thinking if they stay wet for too long they're going to rust. But what I used to do when I did clean double stretch hoses back in the day because I had access to a constellation and oh I do still, I have access to a few vacuums that blow including this one now. The best way of doing it was to, uh, to attach the constellation hose end to whatever hose I've cleaned and then turn it on and then of course pull out the hose and let it run for a while and then I used to hang it up in my airing cupboard but you wouldn't use it for a long time you'd, you'd, have, you'd have to wait at least a week I did anyway just to make sure it's, it's thoroughly dried right 
You can't see it. I'll reposition the camera, plug this in, and let's hope it works. Now then, I don't know if it's going to turn on when I plug it in. I'm just going to be very careful, though, about plugging it in. I'm going to make sure it's switched off at the socket when I plug it in and when I pull the plug out, because I don't want to be pulling the plug out of a live socket and the plug falling to bits on me. Right. OK, she's plugged in. Let's see if it's going to turn on when I flick the switch on the wall. Oh, she's taking a long time to... Mm, I don't know if that's right or wrong. Perhaps... American viewers, if you've got one of these, is that right to you? Does that sound right? It's, it certainly puts some dust into the air. Being an all-metal-bodied cleaner, I'm always <laughs> very wary. Obviously it turned on. Mm. Right. I don't know if doing that is going to leave it off, I'm not sure. Ah, that's turned it off. Okay. Okie dokie. Right, that's not live. Now, the thing to do, if you're... <laughs> No, you shouldn't be testing to see a product is live by touching it, obviously, really, but you should never grab anything that could possibly be live because what ha tends to happen is your reflexes keep your, your wrist clasped onto whatever is electrocuting you. So the thing you do is that with the back of your hand. Right, so it works. She sounds a bit rough, but she's an old girl. So, right, I don't know if this is going to work from the handle. Yeah, I didn't think it would. I'm really not sure how it, how it is supposed to work. Right, unless you have to, I don't know if you're supposed to have it on for a bit. Let's just check, folks. Let's indulge ourselves. This is, this is a, a video for the collectors. It's not for someone who wants to buy a vacuum. So, it's for the people who are more enthusiastic about vacuums than other folks. So we'll, we'll take a bit more time over it and we'll have a look what it says about the on-off switch. Da -da -da. Now it just says, cleaner can be turned on or off with the power switch located on the cleaner. <laughs> Which is true. There's absolutely no suction. That's probably why it's quite loud, because I've not closed the lid. And it's because of this bag, I think. Well, it's not, I'm gonna push, push the bag back. I think that's why, that's why it's so loud. Right, I'm going to have to pause. I've got a delivery. Oh dear. What an anticlimax. It's, it's unusual that a neighbour should be receiving a delivery and not me. I am expecting two more vintage machines. So, uh, but they weren't going to be delivered, delivered by DPD. I think it's Royal Mail, so... Well, that would have been nice if they turned up today. But anyway, right, okay. It was closed and I did notice, it's not very powerful to be honest. I did notice the piston thingy the jig was fluctuating. It is moving ever so slightly. I think this whole bit here is probably would benefit from taking apart. Um, and probably the motor bearings probably need a bit of grease or something, I don't know. It needs, I think it needs something. Um, right, that's probably why the, um, because the, uh, the pneumatic system wasn't working, because I think the doobie was, um, because the thing wasn't closed. It was a it's a little bit quieter with it closed properly, but not much. Um, so, remote control, ah. Oh. Push and release the slide button located on the end of the cleaner to turn it on and off. Ah, it seemed a bit more, I don't know if something's happened now because that seems a little bit more springy than it was. I 
had a feeling, to be honest, that that wouldn't work out, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get it working. And I've just realised it's on minimum. So let's put it on max, see if that makes any difference. Oh, yeah. a little bit more respectable the suction but mm, right if any of you I might have fixed it by the time you see this you never know I don't know if this is this I don't know if that's been opened I'm not sure oh. um, if any of you have any tips on what could be wrong with this I was I was surprised I would have been surprised if it worked straight without me having to do anything <laughs> smell I'll, I'll give her that oh I've put a new bag in obviously see that is doing something it is being it is springing back so I'll I'll have to look at that it would have been too much to ask that that worked I don't think because I believe the uh, the collector who showed this on vacuum land a while ago his also didn't work and I think the air line was trapped or something and it was stopping stopping it working properly so it does probably mean opening this up at some point oh yeah well all in all though pretty pleased with her let's um pop the tube on the wand and oh, i do like that nozzle i do like that nozzle We'll take her for a quick spin, shall we? Before I do take her for a spin, let me just test the um, the doobie. Just see if turning that dial does, in fact, oops, direct the suction to those little holes there. Now you can see that there is a build-up of fluff. So when I turn it on, maybe that fluff will go. Not sure if I'll be able to reach it. See if the remote handle is working. I could have turned it on from my standing position, but no, still not working. Not really sure how it works with it not turned on in the first place. I think you probably have to turn it on and then something happens. Perhaps the pressure has to build up first. We'll see because I'll use it for a minute or so and we'll see. But I'll turn it on from the. Let's extend this. Now, this is telescopic, but it's only two positions, closed or open. There's no fixed other positions. Oh, that's stiff. There we go, that's clicked open. Right, where are we? Where are we? So we're going to be looking at... Which side is it? That's the side. There, there, there. Oh, is it gone? Oh, it's gone. Well, we'll turn it on anyway and have a look. I can confirm that when the dial is directed to either side, you only get suction through these holes. It doesn't even doesn't even have a bit of suction at the front, so it's purely for getting up to the edge. And then you must, of course, remember to turn the dial to the central position, otherwise you're not going to get any dirt picked up. Right. Obviously the hose. There's no swivel on the hose, so it will king and tangle up. Right, well, here we are now. Yeah. Oh, I can't be doing with that squeaking. I'm just going to give the wheels a bit of an oil before I continue this brief demo. Well, unfortunately, I don't have any 
oil to hand. I just had some graphite powder for locks, so it's probably still going to squeak. I do have some oil, but it's in my garage, and for some reason my garage is absolutely full to the brim of vacuum cleaners, and I can hardly get to anything else at the moment. I don't know why that is, but anyway. It might squeak still, might not be as bad. It's hard to get the graphite powder. No, it's still squeaking. Cover your ears, folks. Daisy's, Daisy's fast asleep. She slept through it. Anyway, it seems to be, you know, it's a good nozzle. That'll be, I can't show you anymore. Um, this is going to get stripped down anyway, this nozzle. Taken apart, cleaned up, and lubricated. And she'll be gliding across the carpet, but not the traditional shag pile that you'd get in the home of the 70s, or a deeper pile. We never had shag pile in our house, I don't think. We had in the 70s very garish patterned carpets, as was the fashion. All these plain carpets we have nowadays, people wouldn't have bought them because, oh, they show the dirt, you see. They show the dirt. Let's get a, a busy pattern. You won't see all the filth that we're walking on. But now people like neutral colours. But we have carpet washers, don't we? So. That solves the problem of the filth. Anyway, yeah, she's not perfect, but blimey O'Reilly. Come on. She's pretty, pretty decent, isn't she? She does turn on. She works, albeit noisily. Don't know. Let's just try the old uh, remote again. I'll, oh, well, um, well, I'll, just, um, I'll just use another nozzle. Because I'm wondering whether it needs to be on for a bit. I know, I'll, I'll clean a chair using the all-purpose nozzle. By the way, folks, this furniture isn't my taste. I don't know, like, well, no, it's, it's, they're comfy. These were inherited. They were very good quality furniture, but it's not, I like a more contemporary style. But they were free, you know, we inherited them. They're comfy and they'll do. Can't really afford new sofa and, and chairs anyway. So, um, so that is why we have these stripy gold things. Now, let's do some upholstery cleaning. <laughs> mm. There's too much suction power, so I'm going to, with my foot, press it onto medium. <laughs> She does need some. She needs a bit of grease. It it worked. Something happened, didn't it? it well, it turned off. You see, with this, I don't know if it's supposed to be able to be turned on by this. Because if it's air driven, surely it'll only work when the machine's on. So is this just a, a remote off? But that's a bit silly. It's a bit silly if it is, isn't it, folks? Let's have a look. No, no. Push and release the slide button located on the end of a hook. Push and release to turn cleaner on or off. Well, any information, please, and anyone who's owned or owns this type of machine with the remote, can you turn it from, you know, cold? from plugging it in. Can you turn it on? Are you supposed to be able to turn it on? 
or do you have to turn it on from the cleaner for it to build up some pressure? <laughs> She's not playing ball, is she? Not playing ball. Right, let's check the cord rewind. Right, before I uh, unplug, let's make sure it's switched off at the wall socket. There we are. That's one of the first things I'm going to do is put a new plug on. I think I've got, well it's not going to be a 70s vintage. Got some sticky tape stuck to the bottom of my foot. Um, but it's, it will be an older plug. Right. Let's just give it a little tug. Oops, that's not worked. There we are. Go on. She'll go, she'll do it eventually. There we are, not too bad. Well, there she is, folks. My new celebrity custom, all in all. I'm pretty pleased with this vacuum. Needs some TLC, but the condition will look even better. It probably looks much better than it does in on screen than it does in real life, but it looks pretty good in real life as well. But I'll get it looking even better. I'll get the hose cleaned up. Hopefully, I'll get the remote working properly. I might be doing something wrong. And I don't know, bearings may be available. I'm going to do a bit of search for celebrity bearings. Because I've done it, I've done it with my Celebrity Air Ride, I replaced the bearings on that. Um, and that's, I seem to remember that was quite straightforward and this doesn't seem much different underneath the hood to that. So I think it does sound a bit noisy, a bit too noisy perhaps. I think it probably was a bit of a noisy cleaner, but it, it, she doesn't sound very healthy. But hopefully she... Uh, will be restored a little bit better, but oh, so chuffed to get one of these. I know I've gone on a bit long on this vid. Some of you enjoy the longer videos. I do try and keep them short for, for other videos, and um, it's nice to have a chat with you. I'm just picturing just chatting to a couple of folk, obviously. I'm fairly popular now, and quite a few thousand people may see this video. But... To me, I'm just talking to one of you, because normally only one of you watches at the same time sort of thing. I don't think you have screenings, do you, watching my videos on the big screen, getting a crowd of your friends round for nibbles and a load of my videos. I don't think that's going to happen. No, you're probably sat on the toilet watching this on your phone. <laughs> what a lovely thought to end the video. So thanks for watching, folks. Give me a thumb up, please. Please subscribe, if you don't already, but if you've watched to the end, I expect you're a loyal subscriber. But if you are a subscriber, click on that little bell. Bing! And you'll be updated immediately as soon as I unload, unload, upload <laughs> a new video for your viewing pleasure. So until the next time, vacuum fans, I'll see you all very soon with more vacuum fun and frolics. And, um, oh, I don't know. Oh, Daisy. She slept. She slept through the whole demo, as I'm sure some of you have. Sweet dreams, folks, and goodbye for now.